This next one had over a thousand views and 12 watchers on eBay. That is not where it ended up selling. Hello there. Welcome to our channel. My name is Edine. This is my beautiful wife, Melinda. We're also known as Hustlin' Hooks. We basically uh, resell for a living and we make YouTube content about our journey into entrepreneurship. Yes, this video is going to cover some of our weekend sales. We'll probably sneak in some packing tips into that. What's been selling for us. Just general hang out with us video today. On Mondays, typically we cover the best sales of the weekend. We had over 40 sales this weekend. 40, yeah, 45. 45 sales. Mm -hmm. so. Which is exactly 1% of our inventory on average every yeah. day. So. Yeah, so about 15, yeah. 14 things a day, 15 things a day, something yeah. like that. So yeah, really solid sales weekend. Uh, but we're also going to show you some net profits for some individual items. Like Mondo said, sneaking some packing tips. Uh, first of all, it's kind of yucky outside. We got to go up into the loft and pick our shoes mm -hmm. and some clothing items that sold. Let's jump into it. It's a yucky day in the neighborhood. P.U. Oh. So we unloaded half of the store buyout. My car is still full, obviously. There's plenty of unprocessed inventory, so we're going to get our 30 listings done today. This is all still temporary until we get in some sort of space, so we're not going to invest too much more money up here. After this all moves out, we will use this for personal storage. First thing, picking shoes. This brand, Jabu or JBU, uh, we've sold before this exact style, which is why I picked it up at the thrift. They were five bucks. They sold the same day I listed them on Facebook for $29 some kids winter boots uh tis the season we picked these up last year but we didn't get around to listing them until a few weeks ago they sold for 35 dollars on ebay and sold a pair of liquidation timberlands as well we do have to take the security tags off yet uh, but these are size nine we still have two more pairs of these and they sold for 70 dollars on ebay we also sold some new balances uh, basic running shoes. Again, athletic shoes are in season all year because people still go to the gyms when the weather gets too bad out. These sold for $48 on eBay. This is a pair of shoes that we picked up at the store buyout. A pair of Foot Joys, which is a really good golf brand. Uh, that's what these are, and they do have the trees in them as well. I'll we'll pop up a photo of them for you to see those. These sold on Facebook for $45 plus they pay shipping on these. We also sold these split toe dance coats for 45 bucks on uh, Poshmark. Nice little flip. These were fun at the thrift for seven bucks. This is another pair of kids shoes that we had for a really long time. These are kids boots again. These ones are keen winter. They sold for $35 on Poshmark. They pay shipping as well. Also sold these Nike Vinflows, uh, really nice shoes. Nikes, of course, you can always flip for pretty decent profit. We picked these up at the thrift as well. We sold these for 28 bucks plus shipping on Poshmark. We also sold these Yak Leather Echo golf shoes. They are Gore-Tex, which is really nice. We had them long enough, we just sent out some offers and wanted to move them, so they sold for $39 with free shipping. And usually shoes are about 10 bucks on average to ship, depending on where they're going. We did also have four more pairs of shoes that sold on my Facebook. I'll go ahead and pull those and then I'll show them to you when we get downstairs and talk a little bit about why we had a little influx of Facebook orders this weekend. These four pairs all sold on Facebook. The first ones were these Merrill Zests. They sold for 29 plus ship. They're just like a hiking, trail, running type shoe. These special edition Adidas sold for 35. They're the something in French. I'm not really sure what that says. It's La Marque au Three Bandies or something. Pretty neat camo leather type shoe. They sold for 35 plus ship. We got those from Jay's store. If you don't know who Jay is, he's a gentleman whose store we just recently bought out. These Sorrells also came from him. They sold for 30 plus shipping. They're the uh, Kaufman Canada version. Great for winter. And then another pair of boots, these Gore-Tex North Face with a bunch of damage. 
These also sold, but they only sold for 25 plus shipping. If they were in much better condition, we would have probably gotten more money out of them, but they have some cracking and damage. But still, they're insulated. They'll serve somebody well for at least a couple more seasons. Facebook Marketplace ran some sort of free shipping promotion. That's why we think we had a nice uptick in sales. Mulda had four over the weekend on Facebook, and I also had four. So I think whoever bought all these got a great deal because they had free shipping that Facebook paid and we didn't lose any money off of that. So that was really nice. I also purchased a couple of things to flip on eBay off of Facebook because of that free shipping promotion. Not sure how long that's going on, but take a look at Facebook Marketplace, see if there's anything on there that you want for yourself at free shipping or anything that's worth flipping on eBay where you can make up those margins because you're not paying shipping. Next up, we'll pull some hard goods and show you what else sold for us this weekend. I'm packing up all the shoes. This is what's left, it's just the boots, but these ones have that security uh, tag on them. So this is one of the most criminal things I've ever done in my life. Will it beep? I don't know. I'm not strong enough to cut it. Oh. What a failed security tag. No beep. For this next section, I am going to cover the best sales of this weekend. We're going to format it a little differently than we normally do. I'm going to go over the item and show you what it is, how much we paid for it, and what it sold for and which platform. Then after we get everything packaged and shipped, we're going to break it down so you can see the actual net profit that we made off these. The first one was one of the first sales to get us started this weekend. These two heaters by themselves wouldn't have made the list, but they sold together to the same buyer. One of them sold for 50 and the other one sold for 55. So in total, this was a $105 sale. We have $6 into both of them because one we got up north for a dollar at this really crazy sale that she was having. And the other we only paid $5 for. They're a lot lighter than they look. If you pick them up, not too bad, maybe a couple pounds each. They sold on eBay, and my guess is that they're going to ship for around $18 going UPS ground. They're going to Georgia, so that's very reasonable considering what we have into it and what they sold for. For the heaters, we paid $24.10 to ship them via FedEx. We paid uh, promoted ads on one, which were $1.50, and then selling fees of $6.66 and $7.30, minus the cost of goods as well, that left us with a net taxable income of $59.34 for both of those together. So technically, this is not a weekend sale because it sold overnight on Sunday, so it'll be counted in Monday numbers, but we still wanted to share it, share it with you because it was a really great sale. We paid $10 for this at a garage sale this summer. It is a vintage Polo Ralph Lauren bubble jacket. It's very thick, very heavy duty. As you can see, it has a removable hood. So I've mentioned before that not all Ralph Lauren sells equally, but when I saw this piece, I knew it was going to sell for at least $100. That was just based on the preppy style, very classic, very clean, condition is excellent. There were no rips or tears or anything like that. We had gotten an offer on this jacket for $75 on Posh. And again, we only have 10 into it. So it seemed like a really good margin. And Dean was like, why don't we, why don't we want to take it? And I just said, I think we can get more for it. So that offer subsided. And then we sent, you know, bulk offers out on Poshmark. And this same person countered again with 75. And Dean's like, just take it. And I was like, ah, I just, it's a, it's a good jacket, you know? Uh, so I countered with 100 and they didn't take it. It ended up selling for $150, which is the full price we had it listed on eBay. I think it's just really important to trust your gut sometimes. Sometimes it's all right not to be selfish. You know, a month from now, I probably would have taken the $75 offer, but we are just coming into the fall season. People are just starting to buy this type of clothing again. So I did really want to stick to that for a little while, and I'm glad I did. The coat shipped for $8.83 with USPS. 
we paid $20.32 in seller fees and then we promoted at 3% for $4.50, which still left us with a net taxable income of $106.32. This next one had over a thousand views and 12 watchers on eBay. That is not where it ended up selling. This is a Japanese import Super Famicom gun. We got it in a bulk buy that we're already well into the profit on. So we'll allocate $20 for it, even though at this point it's basically free money. On eBay, we had it listed for a very long time. So periodically we were lowering the price and lowering the price. I was the one to list it. So it was on my Facebook and I do not do that on Facebook. I let those babies ride. And sure enough, it sold this weekend for $105. We will pay shipping on it, but that's probably going to be between $10 and $15, depending on where it's going. On eBay, we had been marking it down until it was at $59. That worked out very well this weekend. Very happy with that. Wanted to point out a couple of things on this too. The value was because the original box was in it. Obviously, if this box was in much better condition, we would have gotten a lot more money for it. It does work. It does have the game inside of it as well. If wonder if you can help me pull it out. And there is some damage to the original plastic in here. Oop, try not to there. It was like that. Mm -hmm, sure. <laughs> So that's what it looks like and again it's for the Super Famicom which is like the I don't know you guys tell me in the comments below which one came first the Super Famicom or the Super Nintendo because I'm not sure hey we just sold something uh, but that's that's what it is so it says right on the box as well super rare the family I bought this from had actually lived in Japan bought a whole bunch of Super Famicom stuff uh, we still have some of it uh, for sale but most of it already sold and the lady offered me a pot of weed while I was there, so <laughs> overall, a great, great interaction with a random lady from New Zealand. The Famicom shipped for $7.94. It was 5% fees on Facebook, which they allotted $5.62 for. Our cost of goods, we said, was 20 so that left, leaves us with a net textbook income of 71.44. The last one in this section is an electronic. It's a six CD player by Onkyo. It's a good brand to look out for. Check them out if you ever see them. We picked this up for uh, $15 this summer at a garage sale. Originally, I think she was asking 25. So I offered 15 thinking we would meet at 20. I think some resellers catch flack for offering a lower amount at garage sales, but that, I don't know if it's a cultural thing, like that's very expected here when we go to garage sales. People ask us that all the time. It's a very much a barter system. And also, they always have the right to say, no, I'm firm on my price. And that has happened in a number of situations. And sometimes it's still worth it for us. And we're like, yeah, okay, we'll pay full price still. No big deal. Just seeing if we could get a sale price. There's no harm in ever asking. So don't be afraid to counter. Uh, the worst that they can say is no, right? Okay, and then you're back at square one. We still would have probably paid $25 because this sold for $225. We will pay shipping. It doesn't have the remote. So had that been the case, we probably could have even gotten more for it. For the Onkyo, it was 18 45 on UPS ground. Then we paid 675 towards ads and we had a $21.05 selling fee, which leaves us with a net taxable income for that one of $163.70. Not bad. We are going to shoot over to Adine and cover a few store buyout sales and some quick sales that we had as well. That's smooth. That's smooth. My dad uh, tears apart all of the valuable fishing reels and he lubricates them and makes sure all the bearings are working right. This one we got for free and it sold for $75. It is a vintage made in Italy Al Alcido Micron. I assume that's how it's pronounced. I'm not 100% sure. Look out for vintage fishing reels. You can find these uh, at garage sales quite often. From Jay's stuff, so we're already making money off of that store buyout. We have been for several days. This Dymo 
Uh, organizer sold really fast for 55 bucks on eBay. Dymo stuff tends to do really well, especially some of the vintage Dymo stuff, which is kind of surprising. Another one from Jay, this uh, vintage uh, Furby, white little Furby. It does work perfectly fine, creepy, look like all the Furbies. It does still have the tag on it. This vintage Furby is from 1998. It sold for 50 bucks with free shipping. It'll ship first class if we can find the right size box for it. We're just going to do a little bit of bubble wrap and get it out of here. Creepy little things. Uh, nice cheap little sale or low value sale, $22.45 on an offer for this Krups 2 uh, replacement piece for an espresso machine. We bought that espresso machine from Jay as well and just parted it all out because it wasn't complete. This will ship for about 9 bucks because we're going to have to put a bunch of padding on it. So it's only like an $8, $9 profit, but that's okay. Um, typically when you part stuff out, it's going to be lower value or lower profit margins. But you have, you know, 7, 8 listings off of one item. Manhunt for PlayStation 2. This was one of the other store buyouts that we did. Um, we bought a whole bunch of video games for a buck a piece. We didn't have time to scan them. We just put them in a pile, offered a dollar each just to you know get rid of stuff that was just sitting on the floor. This one had some value. It sold for $29 with free shipping. It would be about $4 to ship it out. One of my favorite things to sell, women's purses, because I have a deep understanding and fundamental understanding of how women's fashion actually works. So if you guys ever need fashion sense, come to the guy that wears sweatpants three to seven times a week. This one sold for $38 on Poshmark, also came from Jay's store. We had a number of purses from there, most of them were coach, it's nice to see one fly off the shelf really fast. Even though these rock revivals have a rip in the arse, they're still fashionable enough for somebody to rock out because it's rock revival and people wear these for, you know, fashion. These sold for 55 bucks in a pretty beat up condition, also came from Jay's store, they pay shipping on Poshmark. We never heard of a Grace and LA brand jeans, but these sold for 45 bucks free shipping. We're gonna stuff them into a flat rate envelope for about eight dollars. Sold on eBay, also came from Jay's store. So, super happy to see a lot of the stuff that we've already processed fly off the shelf so quickly. A couple more I wanted to share. This brand is Figs. 100% uh, credit goes to Munda for discovering this brand. These are just basic scrubs. They sold for $49 shipped and they're gonna ship first class because they're super light over on eBay and they have this little logo on them So you can try to identify them when you're flipping through and then it also just says figs Right on the tag inside as well. So obviously super happy for something that we paid five bucks for at a thrift store We sold some vintage USA made lunch trays of all things we have you know, eBay is so funny, you like you have no idea what has value until you take the time to look it up. These aren't super fast sellers, but we got like 60, 50, 60 trays for $8 at a church sale. A stack of four sold for $30 shipped and a stack of six sold for $35 shipped. Super easy to get these shipped. We're just going to bubble wrap the stack, cardboard wrap them, and then that's it. So I'll show you guys how I get those uh, shipped out after this segment. Free money, basically, right? It just took the time for photos and for packaging, otherwise we're already in the profit. All I'm going to do is bubble wrap the entire stack together, or two stacks together, and then I'm gonna find a box where I can just not erect the box, just kind of slide them in, and then just tape it around. And if needed, I'll use a large poly bag for moisture barrier so that they don't get wet during uh, transport. So I'll show you what they look like bubble wrapped. So they're bubble wrapped. I'm just going to use these priority boxes because they're going to be shipping USPS priority. And I'm just going to slide them in. And I don't have to erect the box in order to ship them. And then if there's enough gaps, I may use, like I said, a poly bag. So here's roughly what it looks like. I did put uh, one side of the flaps down and I'm just gonna tape from each side to uh, surround them with this cardboard. And then I'm gonna slide them because I can't shut this. So I'm gonna slide it into a big poly bag and ship it USPS priority. And the same thing with this one. I'll show you guys what it looks like once it's done. So here's one of them, nice and protected from any sort of moisture. That's exactly what I'm gonna do with the second one. Hopefully this helps you guys when you ship these awkward, you know, not very big items, but pretty awkward items. Remember, you don't always have to wreck the box. You can just fold it over. And as long as the item is protected, we've never had anyone complain. We sold a couple of more lighthouses. So Melinda's gonna come back and show you guys those. There are two lighthouses that sold this weekend that I'm going to mention. And then another one that sold during the week that I'm also going to mention because I know for sure that one went to a viewer. 
These don't have a specific note, but again, just to cover our bases, thank you if you watch our videos and you bought these. This first one sold for $45, Rose Island, Rhode Island Lighthouse, and that's going to someone named Thomas. So Thomas, if you watch our videos, thank you very much. This next one sold for $59 and is going to someone named Amy. Amy, if you're a viewer, thank you very much. This is the Hillsboro Inlet in Florida Lighthouse. And then the last one was a Boston Lighthouse, and this is going to a viewer by the name of Melinda. So thank you very much, and you have an awesome name. She said that she's happy to contribute to your beautiful baby's future. Thank you so much. And she just sent a really nice note. She was stationed near this lighthouse um, with the Coast Guard. So also, Melinda, thank you for your service as well. We really appreciate you and we appreciate your service and we appreciate your purchase. We wanted to take a moment just to talk about our YouTube channel growth, which we're really excited about. Um, we've gained a lot of traction recently, so we do honestly you know, appreciate that. It, like I mentioned before, it basically pays for our medical insurance at this point in our lives. Mm -hmm. So that's perfect. It allows us to you know, do this from home and not have to worry about that expense. So with that growth, we have received a number of offers from different companies wanting to sponsor videos. And for the most part, we decline them just because they're not services that we use or products that we use or products that we've tested. One of those, however, was Mercari. At the time they reached out, we had sold a couple things on Mercari, but we weren't really actively listing and actively mm -hmm. selling on there. So before we committed to anything like that, we wanted to thoroughly test the product, really. And since then, we started selling more heavily in, I think it was June. Yeah because that's when you went to Colorado. Yeah, we told their uh, sales representative to give us about a month and a half or so to really, you know, be active on there and see if we enjoy the experience before we, you know, advertise them as a platform. So in an upcoming video, we're not really sure when you're going to see, um, you know, a paid promotion from Mercari. So we're really excited about that. And that's a really another like bonus way we can make revenue as a small business or, you know, as, as a family business or entrepreneurs or whatever you want to call us. So it's really nice to see that pay off. Running a YouTube channel is a lot of work. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, by, by us filming this vlog today, it's probably going to be about an hour, hour and a half of filming mm -hmm. and then about two hours of editing before it even goes live. So in those three hours, we could process, you know, yeah, it does, a lot. It does take a lot of time to do it for sure. It's definitely another thing to factor in and factor around when you're trying to hit a listings goal for sure. Yeah, so keep that in mind. If you're uh, interested in creating your own YouTube content, we encourage that you do be yourself, get out there and get it done. But know that it's very time consuming to learn how to edit and learn what your audience wants to see and learn how to do all of that. So yeah. So if you don't like it, if it's not something that really, if it becomes more of a chore, it might not be for you. And that's okay because YouTube really isn't for everybody. It's not designed to be for everybody. Right. So that's perfectly fine. You just have to know that about yourself. Yeah, we just thought we'd share that because it's it's uh, it's very interesting. You know, as we continue to document this journey, we want to document the most amount that we can so that you guys can learn from our wins and learn from our losses and, um, you know, Go from there so anyways uh, look out for that coming up in the near future we do have to review the contract today and see what it entails and what they want from us and see if we can meet in the middle somewhere we have a decent amount of stuff to pack up so we're going to do that next and then in the end we'll run through the total numbers for the weekend uh, sales and uh i have no idea what else will be in this video so stay tuned we could show on my tree there's a tree yeah we brought this baby in from outside it started hailing this weekend so it was time <laughs> So you may have noticed that new addition. We bought that at a garage sale of all things. We Just got... spreading the love of plants throughout yeah. the internet. Yeah, it's uh, the plants are taking over all this valuable eBay room stuff. You know, I could be piling stuff right there. Yeah, I'm fighting back. Yeah. <laughs> plants. Oh, we're gonna put eBay stuff everywhere. I'm gonna put my plants everywhere. It's perfect. I think the plants look better. <laughs> Anyways, we also have to spend some time today figuring out if we're gonna potentially buy a second house as to work out of it and rent out or flip in the future or if we're going to go the commercial route so keep uh yeah we're actually going to move luck. in with rally roots we're going to move in we're going to have a warehouse yeah we're just going to move <laughs> in with the family down uh, down in florida so 
Anyways, uh, we have a lot to do today. Wanted to take this opportunity because this is kind of an awkward thing to ship to show you guys how we're going to ship these two heaters together. So these sold to the same customer, so we're going to combine shipping. I found a box big enough. This one I was a little bit concerned about because of the size, but it fits pretty well in here. Obviously it's not going to fit like this because I only have one hand free. It actually lays down and the other one will lay down on top of it. A few days ago my mother-in-law brought these styrofoam pieces. I'm going to use at least one or two to separate the heater so they don't hit against each other or for some additional padding. And then I'm going to just simply take some bubble wrap, wrap them up and fit them in. If the box is too tall I'm going to trim the box and we'll see how much it actually ends up costing. Okay, so I got them bubble wrapped. This one was a little bit easier to bubble wrap. This one was a little bit tougher just because of the shape. The legs are made out of metal, so I'm not really too concerned about it. But the first one is in there. Now I just have this piece of styrofoam I'm just going to use as a border. Get the second piece in here as well. So it looks like the size of the box is going to be pretty good. I just have to figure out the best way to stuff the sides or maybe I'll try a different orientation. This might actually work a lot better. Okay, so this works much better. I have less space that I have to fill. Plus, I'm not too concerned about these getting damaged as they're primarily made out of metal. Plus, I'll be able to save at least four inches here and that's going to reduce down the shipping cost. So, doing it this way reduces shipping cost and it also should reduce the amount of materials that I need. Now, all I'm gonna do is take some craft paper, fill those voids up, take the rest of the styrofoam and fill up as much void as I can. Try to recycle as much material as possible. Obviously, it saves uh, us money and then it also, you know, partially helps the environment, or at least, you know, in, in theory, it does. Once that's done, I'm just gonna trim it, close it up, and that's it for this one. So it's almost three o'clock, and we're just getting the rest of the shipping done. You can see, we kind of barricade ourselves in. There's another bag full out there, and then all of these have been labeled, and those are the big ones over here. Monda is behind the computer hitting the print and the, you know, this computery stuff. As you can see, we're pretty cramped. Very excited to get out of here at some point in the near future. Well, everybody, that is our Monday. We are done shipping. We're going to drop off some packages. We are going to process some more today, uh, get some more drafts up, get some more listings up. Hopefully that gave you some insight into a typical Monday here at our household. Shipping does take a lot longer on Mondays. It does consume a lot of the day, but this week we're a little more prepared for that. Here's Toddy. In case you were wondering. Toddy's still here. Yes. Yeah, it's mostly shipping, but we did get up early. Um, I started processing at around 6.30. Monda started listing at about 7.30 before our kid got up. So I think we're at 18 listed on our regular account yep. and 6 or 8 listed on our other account. So we're going to just keep doing that. And what we've also been doing that's been helpful is getting when we have time getting drafts ready mm -hmm. so that we're able to list just by essentially clicking a button right. later when we don't have as much time yeah and uh, one of the golf clubs that i listed already sold today so that's pretty exciting it was the cheapest one that we got from that store buyout so it's nice to see that stuff go hopefully you guys found some value in the video hopefully there's some stuff in here you've not thought about reselling so next time you see it at a garage sale or a state sale or thrift store you'll pick it up and see you can make some decent money and hopefully that breakdown of net taxable income was helpful for you guys on those four uh pretty big sales for us for this weekend what were the total numbers it was there was like 45 sales for 45 sales for 1893 yeah so like 1900 dollars in sales this weekend so yeah so three hundred dollars less than last weekend but we had that crazy 29 sales in one day right you know record so that was just wild uh very steady sunday was slower uh just like last week sunday i think you know you have you have um football. football on sundays you have church on sundays people aren't sitting bored at, at mm -hmm. their office job you know shopping so yeah who knows um we're gonna keep at it We'll see you guys at the premiere. Always grateful to see you guys uh, in the chat. So thank you guys for coming out. Mm -hmm. Smack or gently tap or touch. Click. What are the other ways? Flick. Flick the <laughs> thumbs up button uh, if you enjoyed the content. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, we'll see you on Wednesday. And then uh, one video every night, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time premiere. It's mouthful. It's a mouthful.
Patty's like, I can't walk. She's backing up. Too, there's too many packages. <laughs> oh, I did want to address one question that we get often is, um, uh, do we have USPS pickup from our porch or not? Right now we don't, especially on Mondays because there's just so many packages going out. Uh, we had some issues with them in the past. I think once we move into some sort of space, we're probably going to set that up. But right now, we don't mind. We're really close to the post office. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't take us too much time to just go drop yeah, them off. Yeah, it's very quick. Yeah, so that's what we're going to do next. Thank you guys again. Until next time, take, take care. care.